As we head into winter, nothing gets me quite pumped up like seeing fresh powder on the ski slopes. I have so far visited 21 ski resorts in three different countries, with each mountain varying in quality. While most mountains I have visited are great, we will be going over my top 15 favorites. Before we get started, here's a list of mountains I have not had the chance to visit to yet that you might expect to find in someone's top 15. Starting off our list at number 15, we head to one of my many local mountains in the Tahoe region with North Star. Located on the north end of Lake Tahoe, North Star is an excellent intermediate mountain. Spanning 3,170 acres, with 60% of that being intermediate runs, North Star is an excellent mountain to grab your skis and cruise on the slopes. With almost all chairs being high-speed lifts, North Star is a mountain that makes gaining your vertical for the day insanely easy. With some of the best grooming in Lake Tahoe and being protected by the tree line, no matter how long ago the last storm was, you can almost always expect the on-piece trails to be in excellent condition. While North Star does not have any extreme terrain, you can still find tons of excellent advanced terrain with some of my favorite groomed trails anywhere you can go, especially burnout on the backside. North Star also has one of the most unique offerings of any mountain I've been to, where North Star gives all their guests complimentary champagne. Known as toast, every day at 2 p.m., ski eaters and snowboarders gather around the mountain and grab a glass of their champagne. Right as the clock strikes 2 o'clock, we all raise our glasses around the fire and toast to the day. This is one of my favorite ways to end the day and what makes North Star one of the most unique mountains you can ski at. Heading to the other side of Lake Tahoe, we stop at Heavenly Ski Resort. Skiing very similar to North Star, Heavenly is filled with excellent groomed intermediate runs. Spanning 4,800 acres with 45% of that being intermediate runs, Heavenly is a paradise of the casual skier. Heavenly is known for two things, having the best views in Lake Tahoe and having some of the best tree skiing in North America. The trees are perfectly spread out from each other, making a powder day at Heavenly legendary. Heavenly can be a little tough to traverse, where it can be a little unclear exactly where you are on the mountain, or running into a flat spot where you have to traverse across. However, once you learn to navigate this mountain, you can have an absolute blast here. Also supporting almost all high-speed lifts, getting your vertical is incredibly easy at Heavenly. Heavenly does have some tougher terrain, famous for its gun barrel run right off the face of the California Lodge. This is a mogul skier's paradise. With 1,500 vertical feet, gun barrel will make your knees cry all the way down. Every March, Heavenly hosts one of the most insane skiing events I've ever heard of called the Gun Barrel 25. Some insane individuals will race up and down Gun Barrel, and the first one to complete 25 laps is crowned the winner. If traveling 1,500 feet down Moguls is not your style, then head over to Mott and Killebrew Canyons for the, some of the most extreme shoots you'll find in Tahoe. Whether you're searching for some extreme skiing on Moguls, shoots, or something in between, Heavenly has it all. Number 13 takes us to our first destination outside the United States to Teen in the French Alps. Personally, I think this resort will shoot dramatically up in my rankings the next time I do make it out there. Unfortunately, in my trip in 2020, a large snowstorm came in for the two days that we were there, resulting in us only being able to ski about half a day out of those two days because the weather was too bad to continue. Now, what I did experience in that half day of skiing was amazing to say the least. There is something different about these ski resorts in the Alps that are to the scale you cannot fathom in North America. Even Whistler Blackcomb looks tiny in comparison to these gargantuan resorts. Filled with 90 lifts, Teen will take days to fully traverse. I personally plan on spending at least four days there the next time I do make it out to this incredible resort. You will find things at Teen you won't be able to find anywhere else, such as fulfilling your dream of jumping off a ski run like an Olympian. Bungee Ride is an extra cross attraction located on the mountain where you can safely strap on bungee cords to you and then you can fly off the massive jump. Teen also has something that is foreign to North American mountains where you'll be able to take a funicular to access the top of the mountain and its glacier. Taking a train directly through the mountain was one of the most memorable ski runs I took during my Alps trip. I cannot wait to return to this amazing resort and see where it ranks truly on my list as I expect it to rise quite a bit. Heading back to Lake Tahoe, we visit Alpine Meadows. The smaller brother of neighboring Palisades, Alpine Meadows is another excellent Lake Tahoe resort. While Alpine only has 13 lifts, it's amazing to see how well these are placed to access so much of the mountain. Alpine is truly known for its bowls and higher up terrain. With a little traversal, you can find some of the best runs anywhere in the country. Some of my best powder days were spent in Alpine's many bowls and chutes. Alpine Meadows also has some fantastic goalies to zip your way through the woods. The first few times I went to this mountain, I stayed more on the runs and thought it was a good mountain, but nothing to write home about. However, once I ventured off trail into these spectacular bowls, I found out why Alpine Meadows is such a special mountain. For this year, an interesting question is raised about Alpine Meadows. With the new gondola connecting with Palisades, is this one massive resort now? 
The argument can be made similarly to how Whistler Black Home is generally considered one resort. Nevertheless, I am curious to find out when I head to both Alpine Meadows and Palisades this winter. Utah is known for its amazing powder and Alta may have the best of any resort in Utah. One of the very few skier only resorts left, Alta is a paradise to the advanced skier. Similar to Alpine Meadows, Alta accesses so much of its terrain with so few lifts. Alta has some of the best steeper groomed runs of any mountain I've skied at adding a new level of fun in case you don't want to ski off piste. For those who do want to ski off piste, Alta does have some incredible trails through the trees along with some incredible bowls. Alta is known for being a locals mountain and I can see how this is a favorite to those who live in the Salt Lake City area. Colorado is even more famous for its ski resorts and its largest resort kicks off our top 10. Vail is gigantic, spanning 5,289 acres and 31 lifts, ranging from the excellent tree skiing to their legendary back bowls. The back bowls are south facing, so in our case, where it has not snowed much in two weeks, they were pretty rock hard. I can only imagine how much of a paradise it would be on a powder day with bowls as far as the eye can see. The front of Vale also has some incredible terrain with one of my favorite runs anywhere, Grandy Dancer. This run consistently has its pitch changing, giving a roller coaster like experience as you ski down the slope. The rest of Vale is also incredibly well groomed, giving some high speed runs with some wide open trails if you know how to avoid the crowds. Where Vale really excelled is past the back bowls at Blue Sky Basin. Going to the next ridge over, Blue Sky Basin opens up even more fun terrain. Giving the feeling of being in the middle of nowhere, it is pretty amazing skiing past where you cannot see any other civilization as you look past Blue Sky Basin. Ending your day at Blue Sky Basin gives an incredible final run as you have to make your way back over to the front side of the mountain. Vale also has one of the most impressive villages in the ski industry, with tons of shopping and dining options available to help you wind down after a long day of skiing. Vale truly does have terrain for everybody. Coming in at number 9 is another mountain I would expect to shoot up in my rankings if I had a better day weather-wise, and that is Jackson Hole. As I alluded to, my one and only visit so far has been in late March, where unfortunately the snow was a lot more spring-like than we were hoping for. It had been about two weeks since the last storm, so it was very firm in the morning and slushy by the afternoon. Regardless of lackluster conditions, Jackson Hole still excels in an incredible mountain with so much incredible terrain. Famous for Corbett's Kular, Jackson Hole has some of the toughest terrain out there with many runs like Corbett's that I will never be brave enough no matter how good of a skier I am. Watching videos of the annual event, King and Queen of Corbett's just shows how insane some of the insanely good skiers at Jackson Hole are. While Jackson Hole is famous for its extremely tough terrain, there are some excellent groomed runs as well. Some of the best groomed black diamonds are found here on the right half of the mountain. Located just south of Grand Teton National Park, Jackson Hole is a very unique place to ski at. At the top of the tram, you'll find one of my favorite foods on any mountain. Jackson Hole is famous for their waffles found in the hut near Corbett's Kular. Stuffed with peanut butter and bacon, along with many other toppings, these waffles are an excellent midday snack to get you to that late night apres. Overall, Jackson Hole is an excellent mountain that I really hope to revisit one day. Number 8 brings us back to Lake Tahoe for one of the most iconic mountains in California. Palisades Tahoe, formerly known as Squaw Valley. With an incredibly rich history, you know that a resort that hosted the Winter Olympics has to be one of the best mountains in the world. Filled with tons of extreme terrain, Palisades is an advanced skier's paradise. Similar to Jackson Hole, there's a ton of terrain that I would never touch no matter how good of a skier I become. Watching skiers launch off the massive cliffs into the fresh powder below is one of the coolest experiences you'll ever get while skiing at Palisades. It's not all about the extreme terrain, however. With tons of excellent advanced terrain on the mountain, there is plenty for most skilled skiers to have a heyday. Finding hidden gems, such as appropriately named Hidden Bowl, makes for a powder day to be an all-time great. One of my all-time favorite runs is at Palisades with one of the best bowls in the country, North Bowl. Challenging terrain met with incredible snow conditions make this one of the best runs out there. KT-22 is one of the most famous lifts in North America with some incredible and legendary terrain to boast. Home to some of the runs that used to be in the Olympics themselves, KT-22 is an extreme skier's paradise. With all this incredible terrain, you would think Palisades would rank higher on this list. The main reason it does not rank higher is due to the weather. Unfortunately, it is uncommon to have wind holds that shut down a significant portion of the mountain. However, when you do get those bluebird windless powder days, you may have one of the best skiing days ever in front of you. 
With the addition of the new gondola, Powder Days will be next level with a quick trip over to Alpine Meadows to hit up their excellent bowls as well. We next head down south to the other side of the lake to Kirkwood. Located off the beaten path, Kirkwood rewards anyone who manages to make the venture out to Kirkwood Valley. While lacking the amenities of most major resorts, Kirkwood makes up for it with some of the best and most difficult terrain in the country. Standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with giants like Palisades and Jackson Hole, Kirkwood has plenty of insane and fun terrain to let yourself go wild on a powder day. Kirkwood is littered with amazing goalies and unique ski runs such as the Wave. Located on the backside, the Wave is a naturally forming crest that makes it look like snow is going to be a wave cresting on this beach. This leads to one of my all-time favorite areas to head to on a powder day. You then finish up your run skiing through Kirkwood's incredible trees. Heading back over to the front of Kirkwood are some amazing runs such as the Snow Snake Gully. Ski down a naturally forming half pipe from the top of chair 11 all the way down to the base. Then head up to Kirkwood's most famous chair, the Wall. Appropriately named for a bowl facing the rest of the valley, the Wall is a hot spot for any skier on a powder day. Kirkwood's groomed runs are also the star of the show as well, with some of the best groomed runs in the country. Sentinel is always a blast to rocket down to high speeds on fresh corduroy. What Kirkwood lacks in advanced high speed lifts, it makes up with incredible train, making this a must stop for any Tahoe trip. We go back to Utah for number 6 with Snowbird. Along with almost all my additions in my top 10, Snowbird is no stranger to extreme terrain. Filled with chutes and amazing bowls, Snowbird is the premier skiing destination for Utah's incredibly light powder. The front side of Snowbird is a great mix of wide open bowls up high and amazing tree skiing down below. Snowbird still has some incredible groomed intermediate and advanced runs in between the more extreme chutes and bowls. Where Snowbird really shines though is when you head to the backside to Mineral Basin. This whole backside is the ultimate playground on a power day with incredibly wide bowls with 1500 feet of uninterrupted vertical from top to bottom. If Snowbird was only Mineral Basin, this mountain would still rank in my top 10. Also located in Mineral Basin is an access point to Alta Ski Resort making for an epic day if you have access to both mountains. Snowbird also has one of the most unique ways of accessing any point of any mountain, where you board a moving conveyor belt that goes through a tunnel drilled out through the mountain. Overall, Snowbird is a must visit to anyone who loves wide open bowls like myself. Starting off our top five, we head to California's premier resort, Mammoth Mountain. Mammoth is a ski resort I've been skiing at for decades. This and nearby June Mountain is where I learned how to ski when I was just a few years old. Needless to say, Mammoth has a lot of sentimental value to me. Sentimental aside, Mammoth is one of the best mountains on the West Coast and in the United States. Mammoth has amazing variety from beginner up to expert runs. While other mountains on this list have more extreme terrain, Mammoth has everything the advanced average skier would find in their ability levels. Mammoth also has some of the best snow on the west coast thanks to the high elevation levels you typically find in Colorado. With a base around 8,000 feet and a summit all the way up to 11,059 feet, Mammoth has incredibly varied terrain. With amazing tree skiing down in lower elevations, you'll find some incredible lines with Mammoth's 3,500 acres of skiable terrain. Where Mammoth truly shines, however, is at the top third of the mountain with its incredible bowls. Once the tree line ends, Mammoth becomes a playground to skiers like myself who love wide open bowls. Ranging from untouched mogul filled runs to amazing powdered filled bowls, Mammoth has to be one of the best trains of any resort I've been to. For anyone who does want to stay on piste, Mammoth does groom two of their bowls as well. Cornus and Scotty's are some of the best groomed runs of any mountain I've skied at. Wide open and smooth, allowing for some amazing high speed runs down the steep terrain. Mammoth will always be one of my favorite mountains and one I will always want to get the chance to return to. Next we head back to France, the largest ski resort in the world, Le Trois Valley. Like Teen, the resorts in the Alps make even the largest ski resorts in North America look tiny in comparison. While some of the largest ski resorts in North America measure between 5,000 to 8,000 acres, Le Trois Valley is a colossal 25,910 acres in size. With 370 miles of runs and 183 lifts, there is no shortage of things to do while at Le Trois Valley. Le Trois Valley may be known for its size, however there is more than just the size and scale that makes this French Alps resort special. Filled with tons of fun activities such as fun slopes where you ski through tunnels and have other obstacles to ski around and in between. The villages also have their unique activities such as massive igloo bars that really raise the bar for après skiing. Heading back to the star of the show, the slopes at Letois Valley do not disappoint as well. With the tree line being so low in the Alps, most skiing takes place in the wide open runs that blanket the entire mountain. The snow quality is kept excellent thanks to decently high elevation making sure that you can find some excellent runs off-piste even when it has been a few days since the last storm. 
Where this resort and other resorts in the Alps truly shine is on a powder day. When the snow has fallen the night before and nothing but bluebird skies are in front of you, get ready for the best powder day of your life. I was lucky enough to witness this on our very last day of our Alps trip in 2020. Due to Europeans in general wanting to stay on piste and the massive amount of space, fresh tracks were being found all day long. It was incredible skiing on a run, looking to your left and seeing untouched powder, yours for the taking. We literally skied all day and found fresh tracks on the mountain until our legs were begging for us to stop around 3 o'clock p.m. For anyone who's only skied in North America, you owe it to yourself to head over to the Alps. It is such a different and wonderful experience that everyone has to experience for themselves. From the largest ski resort in the world, we head back to the largest in North America, Whistler Blackcomb. Located an hour north of Vancouver, Canada, Whistler Blackcomb is one of the most well-known and legendary mountains in North America. Combining two massive ski areas into one, Whistler Blackcomb is a massive 8,100 acres with nearly a mile of vertical elevation. With such a large footprint, you can get such a wide range of varied and incredible terrain. Like many mountains with this large of a vertical presence, the bottom half of both mountains have excellent tree skiing opportunities. Combined with excellent natural foliage and terrain, Whistler Blackcomb is littered with other incredible groomed runs that seem to go on forever. However, the top portion of these mountains is where they truly shine. As you might have guessed, the wide open bowls are spectacular at both mountains. On the Whistler side, you have the entire top portion of the peak open for wide open bowl skiing. However, the Blackcomb side is where the bowl skiing truly shined for me. With equally as great of a wide open terrain as the front side of Whistler, you can spend all day in the high alpine. The best run in North America, in my opinion, requires a little bit of hiking to get to, but is so rewarding. Located on the backside of Blackcomb Mountain is the Blackcomb Glacier. I was lucky enough to take the T-Bar and ski this massive bowl on a powder day. With five miles of amazing powder to run through, this is my favorite run I have ever done to this day. Along with the incredible five mile long Blackcomb Glacier Trail, you will find a glacier cave that you can head into halfway down the trail. This is one of the most spectacular and backcountry feeling experience you'll ever have while skiing at a major ski resort. At Whistler Blackcomb, you have so many amazing options that it can be hard to choose which mountain to hit up. Thankfully, in 2008, the mountain built one of the most impressive gondola systems in the world with the Peak to Peak Gondola. Able to get you to the tops of both mountains in 11 short minutes, the Peak to Peak is an incredible, convenient addition to the resort. At its peak, it will be 1,430 feet above the valley floor. While I have only been to Whistler Blackcomb once, with so much terrain I am yet to discover, I cannot wait to return. Coming in at number two is Breckenridge. Located in an old mining town in the heart of the Colorado Rockies, Breckenridge is the pristine and ideal mountain ski town. While on paper not as massive as the others on the list at 2,900 skiable acres, with each of its five peaks feeling different from the last, you will never get bored skiing here. Like many other resorts on this list, Breckenridge has fantastic tree skiing. In particular, my favorite tree skiing run of all time, The Windows. Located on Peak 9, this amazing run it has many different tree runs you can take. All meeting down at the creek below, this run gives the backcountry feeling that all the best ski resorts have. Breckenridge also has incredible grooming to give tons of amazing intermediate cruisers, especially over at Peak 7. With the pitch always changing, runs all over Peak 7 keep things interesting all the way down to the base of the mountain. The true crown jewel of Breckenridge is Peak 8, where you can take the highest lift in North America at 12,840 feet. Giving tons of incredible access points, the Imperial Super Chair is one where you can spend your entire day lapping. One of my top three favorite runs in the world is on the top of this chair where you'll be able to make a quick traverse over to Whale's Tail. This massive bowl is one that commonly holds onto snow making for fantastic runs even when it has been a week or so since the last storm. Breckenridge truly has what skiers like myself dream about, which is wide open bowls above the tree line, something that all the mountains in my top five possesses. For those who are wanting even more adventures, hiking to the top of peaks 6 or 8 can be incredibly rewarding. During my 2018 trip, the last run of the day was spent climbing to the top of peak 6 and having Beyond Bowl to ourselves. This is one of the most memorable and incredible skiing experiences to date. It's amazing terrain like this that makes Breckenridge one of my all-time favorite mountains. For my number one resort, we head up to Montana to one of the most well-rounded resorts out there, Big Sky. Ranging from beginner terrain, tons of intermediates, and to the most difficult terrain I've ever seen, Big Sky has it all. Located right between Bozeman and Yellowstone National Park, Big Sky is one of the premier winter destinations. Big Sky is one of the largest ski resorts in North America at 5,800 acres with 36 chairs. Over the last decade or so, Big Sky has been investing very heavily on upgrading their lifts into the best collection of ski lifts in the country. Most major lifts are high-speed lifts, and three of them are super advanced lifts with heated seats. 
These three lifts also have a bubble shield to pull down to help take care of the headwinds you may commonly encounter while on these lifts. Big Sky is also home to North America's only eight-seater lift. With this massive lift infrastructure, Big Sky might be the best mountain to handle crowds in North America. As I alluded to before, Big Sky has incredible terrain for all ability levels. Scattered across most of the mountain, there are some incredible groomed intermediate runs. With the cold weather and great grooming, you could find yourself cruising on groomed runs for miles. Big Sky also has some incredibly advanced runs as well with tons of off-piste runs to take advantage of any fresh powder. Lone Mountain is home to Big Sky's extreme terrain. Ranging from double black diamonds to even some triple black diamonds, Big Sky has some of the toughest extreme terrain in the country. Just as Jackson Hole is famous for Corbett's, Big Sky is famous for its big coulard. It is easy to get over your head on Lone Mountain. Me and my sister skied down one of the double black diamonds marks, and Chandler had one misstep to have her tumbling down the mountain. Somehow she escaped with just a bruise on her back, but it easily could have ended very poorly. Being located so close to Yellowstone, taking a day off from skiing and spending it in the amazing national park, and seeing it during the winter is a must do. No matter how tough of terrain you want to tackle, Big Sky has so much to offer for any skier no matter their ability level. That's a wrap on my favorite 15 ski resorts I've skied at so far. With a new season gearing up, I cannot wait to return to some of these mountains. While I do not have any plans to go anywhere new this season, I do look forward to the following season where hopefully we'll get to add some big bucket list resorts to my list. In the meantime, wax up those skis and get ready for the new season. Thank you for watching.